Journalist Jason Rezaian defended himself in an Iranian court on Monday. He is being held in Iran, accused of espionage. It was his second court appearance in the closed door trial. The charges could land him in prison for up to 20 years if he's convicted. Rezaian and the Washington Post have strongly denied any wrongdoing. His mother, who so far has not been permitted inside the courtroom, spoke out while her son was testifying. I just know that my son is innocent. As his mother, I wanted to come and show my support. Six months ago, I was here, and they told me, leave and come back for the trial. I came back a month ago. I'm here for the trial, but they're not permitting me to see him. We're joined now from our D.C. bureau by Ali Rezaian, Jason's brother. Um, Ali, uh, it's so good to see you again. Uh, give me the latest on what you're hearing right now. You know, right now we're waiting to find out when the next day of the trial will be. Uh, our lawyer's gone in uh, to the judge and is uh, petitioning for it to be as soon as possible. Uh, we know there will at least be one more day and possibly uh, several more days of trial. And here's the issue right now, though, Ali, right? I mean, they're, they're not giving you any details on when they might wrap, when, when the next appearance might be, if your mother's going to be invited at all. Uh, you know, at this point, we don't believe that my mom's going to be in there. They've closed the court. They've, uh, they've locked it down. And the only person that's able to go in with Jason is his lawyer uh, and nobody else. There's really no reason for that. Uh, we've petitioned for uh, an open trial so that people could uh, see what was going on. They could hear what the evidence is uh, that they claim uh, against him. And uh, it's just fallen on deaf ears at every point. When was the last time your mom was able to speak to him? Uh, you know, uh, since she's been in Iran, she's spoken to him several times. Uh, she did get to meet with him face to face uh, today, which is Tuesday, um, but that was uh, through uh, you know glass over a tele with a telephone, uh, not at a table or anything. It's really, it's really just ridiculous. What is the timetable as as far as, as far as you've been able to gather? Is there any sort of timetable on how long you think it might take? You know, I think that um, based on the way that the trial is going right now, we think it's going to be several more days of testimony and, and defense. Uh, you know, that could, at the cadence that they're going, it could be another uh, week or two. Um, but they don't tell us until after they've adjourned. Uh, they come back a couple days later and say, okay, the next trial date is going to be uh, next Monday or, or three days from now or something like that. So it, it's, it's really unclear, and that's really infuriating for my mom and for everybody. So have you been given any kind of an indication on how much uh, if at all, these uh, these discussions have been part of the nuclear negotiations. Well, you know, I think both countries have said that they have ongoing conversations, um, you know, in parallel. So when they meet, they are speaking about uh, Jason and other folks who are being detained. Um, it's not part of the discussions in terms of the actual negotiations uh, of, uh, you know, the deal, the P5 plus one deal. Um, and, you know, Jason's opinion and our opinion has always been that, you know, he hasn't done anything wrong. He's an innocent man, and there's absolutely no evidence he's done anything. Uh, so to put him in the context of any other thing that he's not responsible for, that he doesn't have anything to do with, is, is completely unfair to him. What exactly are they saying he did? Uh, you know, I mean, the things that they've spoken about uh, publicly, uh, one was that, uh, you know, in, during the transition between uh, the President Bush and President Obama, Jason uh, went online and filled out a, a form uh, on the Internet um, saying, look, I, I've lived in Iran a lot. I love Iran. I grew up in the United States. I love the United States. I think our relationships uh, as countries isn't that great. I'd love to help your administration get us better relations with Iran. Uh, they've taken that out of context, and they said that he was, you know, communicating with the president of the United States. Uh, you know, another thing that they've done uh, is they've taken uh, emails that he sent uh, to the consulate uh, in the UAE as part of uh, his wife's uh, petition for a, a green card uh, and said that he was uh, making propaganda uh, and saying propaganda against uh, the establishment in Iran. Um, and, and, and quite literally what he said was, uh, you know, I'd like you to expedite the review of my wife's um, visa uh, because uh, as journalists, uh, we don't know if it's uh, safe for us here all the time, and so we'd like to uh, be able to uh, have that as an option. So I think that that really shows uh, what they're going after. It's ridiculous. There's no basis uh, for these charges, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, at least one of them's proved itself out. Are you hopeful right now that when this you is all over, he'll be back? 
you know, I think I know it, uh, he'll be back. It's just a matter, you know, of, of, of when and, and not if. Uh, he's got a strong lawyer. She's been defending him very vigorously. He's committed uh, to defending himself. He knows he didn't do anything wrong. That's probably one of the hardest things for him. Um, but, I mean, I think that, you know, because he knows he has a strong case, because he knows there's no evidence against him, uh, and because his, his lawyer is willing to fight for him, and, and because the press is willing to get this uh, out, you know, globally, he's, uh, he's in good spirits uh, that that can happen. Ali Razayan joining us from our D.C. Bureau. Uh, thank you very much, and our, uh, our thoughts to the whole family. Thank you so much for having me.